and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. John's guest today is Judge James L. Kimbler. Judge Kimbler is the longest serving judge in Medina County. He became Wazoo Municipal Judge in 1986 and served on that bench until January 1, 1997. On that date, he became Medina County Common Pleas General Division Judge, a position he has held ever since. Judge Kimbler is married to Attorney Joyce V. Kimbler, and they have three children and live in Medina County. Welcome, Judge. Oh, John, how you doing? Good. Good to have you back. Good to be back. Actually, I always enjoyed meeting with you. I was thinking about you coming in today, and I thought today was the appropriate day to say this to you. Every time you've come, we talked about your 25th anniversary. <laughs> but you know, I think that has come and gone. It did. It, it, uh, February uh, 10th uh, of uh, 2011 was 25 years ago that I was sworn in, and it's appropriate that we're having this conversation in Wadsworth because I was judge of the Wadsworth Court when I first became a judge and was Judge uh, McElvain's predecessor and occupied that position about 10 years before I went to Medina. Well, how about that? Did you do anything special for your 25th? Um, no, uh, and I don't really know why. I think maybe I went out with Joyce, my wife. Um, but, you know, um, I, I think those things, I think they're more remarkable when you look back on them than when you actually experience it. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think at the end of my career, I'll, I'll look back on it, I hope, with a lot of, I think with a lot of pride and pleasure, but I think it'll be more significant to me then than it was actually the day I had 25 years. Okay. Well, I know we, we've, we've mentioned that on a couple of occasions yeah. that, you know, you'd be climb, reaching your 25th. So, well, congratulations. Well, thank and, you. And thanks, thanks to, to we, we know it's a hard job. And uh, what's the old saying? It's a hard job. Somebody has to do it. And uh, you've been our judge for a long time. Judge, today we want to talk about one of your favorite topics, juries. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I've managed to get some questions together for you today. Uh, I know this is a favorite topic of you. I mean, I have a little inside information. Every now and then I talk to you about legal issues, and I know you always talk about juries. Um, and I, well, jury trials, I for those of us who practice law, don't happen quite as often as they do for you, but it's a significant happening for every lawyer and I imagine it's a significant happening for every judge it's just that you have a lot more insight well I've been doing jury trials since uh, as a judge since 1980 uh, 86 I became a judge and I've done probably close probably over 600 by now uh, I actually stopped uh, counting and I have not gone back for some time but I stopped counting when I was over 500 um, and so I find myself, after 25 years of being a judge, having done more jury trials than any other uh, judge currently active in Medina County, and I probably think I've done more jury trials than any judge who ever sat on the bench in Medina County. Wow. Um, I'm not sure of that last uh, uh, comment, but I think so. Um, and so I did about 251 when I was down in Wadsworth Municipal Court and the rest I've done in the Common Pleas Court. Um, so I've, I've had, and then before that I had done a lot of jury trials when I was first a lawyer with the firm of Murray and Murray and Sandusky. Uh, so I've had a lot of exposure with jury trials and I really like doing jury trials. I see. You actually worked as a prosecutor one time in your life too, didn't you, Judge? Twice. I worked as a, an assistant prosecutor in Huron County uh, in 1977, 78, and I worked as a Medina County uh, prosecutor assistant prosecutor for, for Greg Happ from 1981 to 1984. Um, primarily for Greg, I did mostly uh, advising uh, the county commissioners and the uh, sanitary engineer's office, although also I did some jury trials for Greg. 
And I did jury trials for uh, uh, the prosecutor out in uh, Huron County, who was Dick Hauser. I see. So I've done prosecutors. I've been both a prosecutor on jury trial and also a defense lawyer on criminal say, case. You, so you, you actually, as a defense lawyer, you were on the other side of the That's right. So, That's right. So you've held... You've held almost every seat in the house. You, uh, you yeah, I've been a plaintiff on civil cases. I've been a defendant on civil cases. I've been a uh, prosecutor on criminal cases, and I've been a defense lawyer on criminal cases, and now I've been a judge. And okay. there are five of like that, but you're right. So actually, there's only one seat in the house that you have never held in 25 years directly, and that's a juror, right? That's right. I've never been a oh, juror. Okay. Um, a couple of my colleagues have. In fact, a mutual friend of ours. Uh, Judge uh, Ralston Rousten, yeah. from uh, Hancock County actually once served on a jury. Um, but I've never had, um, I was called for jury service um, this year in my own court, but I excused myself. Sure. Well, this is a perfect segue. Uh, jurors come to your court and they render a verdict. Uh, issues of fact and law are discussed. So let's take a look back a bit. Judge, how long has Ohio, I'm speaking of the state of Ohio, uh, had jury trials? Well, I have to tell juries in my, in my courtroom sometimes, we actually had jury trials in Ohio before Ohio existed as a state. Um, probably jury trials were brought into the Ohio Valley area from uh, um, settlers who came in from both uh, Virginia, and that was the first part they went into, the Marietta part. And then uh, other settlers came in the northern part of Ohio from New England. And both those areas had the right to a jury trial. And in 1787, when, we're, when the United States had not yet adopted our present Constitution, and we were still operating under the Continental Congress, yeah. and actually while the Constitution was being debated in um, uh, Philadelphia, the Continental Congress under the old Articles of Confederation met in New York, so he, uh, yeah. passed the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. Right. And the Northwest Ordinance guaranteed to um, people in what became what they call the old Northwest Territory, which became the states of Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, and Wisconsin, uh, guaranteed to them the right to a jury trial. Uh, so we've had jury trials in Ohio uh, as a formal uh, right uh, people since 1787 and before that we had jury trials by custom in what was known as uh, the Ohio Territory. Um, but while we've had jury trials since 1787, uh, jury, the makeup of juries has changed dramatically since 1787. Well, that's, uh, I guess that leads us right into the, to the next question, Judge. I mean, we, we all watch the television, we watch Law and Order, I mean, we, we know juries exist. I think it's common knowledge to all my viewers that they are citizens, they're ordinary people mm -hmm. like you and I that get called for it. But uh, for some people who have never been called, and there, there's probably a lot, uh, how does one become a juror? I mean, Well, ever since Ohio was formed as a state, John, um, ever since we had a constitution in the state of Ohio, it has um, linked uh, jury service to voting and okay. you had to, to be a juror or you had to be eligible to be a voter. Initially in 1803 the only people who could vote were white males who paid taxes and then they adopted the Constitution of 1851 and they said that people who could vote could be had to be still had to be white males um, but you did no longer they got rid of the tax requirement and then um, between 1851 and 1912, um, the United States of America adopts uh, the, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the United States Constitution. And even though Ohio still kept the idea you had to be a white male to be a juror in the Constitution, the Ohio Supreme Court ruled that uh, the constitutional amendments of uh, the Civil War era, the Civil Rights Amendments as they're often called, guaranteed to black males the right to vote, which then guaranteed them the right to be on a jury. Right. Um, and then the next expansion took place um, in the 19... In 1912, we actually amended the Ohio Constitution, and there was a lot of debate about whether or not women should be allowed to vote. And I think, actually, that was not put forth in the 1912 Constitution. But the United States adopted the 19... Equal, uh, the uh, Women's uh, Voting Amendment in the 1920s, right. and so that again expanded the uh, right to be on a jury to, to women. 
Okay. But again, and, and, you, 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 the voting is directly Right. Voting is directly related to juries. And then finally, the next expansion, the last expansion came when we adopted the 18-year-old right to vote. And then could, because 18-year-olds could vote, they could also be on juries. I see. Uh, at the present time, there's 88 counties in Ohio. 87 of them uh, limit or require that in order to be a juror, you have to be a registered voter. There's one county that does not have exclusively registered voters being on juries, and that is Montgomery County. Montgomery County has a mixture of both um, registered voters and driver's license. Oh, I see. And every county could do that. But the experience with uh, uh, Montgomery County when I talk to judges from Montgomery County, they're not real happy with the idea because uh, although voters are fairly transient in our state, probably more transient than most people think, um, driver's license uh, holders are really transient. Really? And so you s end up sending out a lot of uh, summonses that come back without people any delivery. I see. Uh, so at the present time, to be on a juror in, in, in Medina County, you have to be a registered voter. And there's about 125,000 registered voters now in Medina County. Okay. So there's 125,000 people who are eligible to serve on a jury somewhere either in, in the Common Pleas Court, which is myself and Judge Collier, uh, occasionally Judge Lone and probate juvenile, but very seldom. And then of course, uh, down here in Wadsworth, Judge McElvain in Medina uh, Municipal Court area, uh, Judge Chase. Sure. So those are 125,000 potential jurors in Medina County. So I guess you, it would be a fair statement to say here in Medina, a qualification of being a juror is being a voter. That's right. Okay, a registered voter. That's I mean, right. All right, but then is, is there disqualifications? I mean, well, are, there's are some there, people not allowed to serve on jurors? Yeah, there are people who can actually be uh, barred from juries. For example, um, a person who has um, committed a felony may have the right to vote once they have served their probationary period or been released from parole but they still may not be eligible to be a juror in a criminal case uh, under statute. So those people would be barred. Um, there's two ways that people can be excused from jury trials when they're, when they're actually in the courtroom. And one is what's known as a challenge for cause, and the other is what's known as a peremptory challenge. And a challenge for cause is a challenge that a lawyer exercises on behalf of their client I see. against a juror for <coughs> one of several narrow reasons set forth in the Ohio law. For example, um, the person's a relative of the person who's on trial, okay, or the sense. person was on the grand jury that r released indictment. the indictment yep. of the trial jury, or the person uh, has had a is being currently represented by one of the attorneys. Those are all challenges for cause. There's unlimited the ch the lawyers have an unlimited number of challenges for cause, but they can only exercise them for pretty narrow reasons. But they also have, depending on whether it's a civil case or a criminal case, the civil case they have three peremptory challenges. If it's a criminal case, they have four peremptory challenges in my court, and those are challenges they can exercise for any reason whatsoever, and it's not necessary to give a reason to the juror being challenged. So that's so. If you're going, uh, an attorney's going to exercise peremptory judge. I mean, whatever the guy says, uh, whatever qualifications got, if that attorney doesn't want that particular juror, he's off. With this exception. There is what's known as a Batson challenge, and uh, it doesn't come up very often in, a, in Medina County courts, but if, you, if, if, if one of the parties to a lawsuit, either civil case or criminal case, so those most and more likely comes up in criminal cases, begins to exercise a pattern of peremptorily challenging either a certain racial group or a certain gender, oh. then you can make what's known as a Batson challenge. And when you have a Batson challenge, uh, what happens is you go to the, to the sidebar, so to speak, out of the presence of the jury, and the court asks the lawyer who is making the challenge, what is the reason you're making this challenge? And they have to give you a non-racial, non-gender based um, explanation. Um, so for example, I once had a case where there was a Batson challenge, and the reason why the, the prosecutor was excusing the juror was that she had had a relative, a close relative of hers, who had been prosecuted by Medina County Prosecutor's Office. And I thought that that was probably a, a non-racial, non-gender-based sure, sure. reason. Uh, so I, I did allow them to peremptory challenge. But assuming that it's not a Batson challenge, assuming that, that there's not a racial component or a gender component to the challenge, 
uh, they can excuse for any reason whatsoever, and they don't have to give a reason to myself or to the juror. And a lot of times, it's based on the fact you might your client might say, you know what, I don't want that person yeah. on my jury. I'm getting criminal bad vibes. Criminal four in my courtroom. That's right. And, and civil three. That's right. I see. Depends on the size of the jury. Eight man jury, three. Twelve man jury or twelve woman jury, twelve person jury, four. Judge in in the. Is there a method that a judge uses? I mean, not necessarily the, well, I guess the selection, the pool comes from the voters. Right. But once they, the, this pool reaches your courtroom, mm -hmm. we're going to go through a, a process called voir dire where right. the, the attorneys are going to be questioning. I guess you could question them. Yeah, I often do question. I usually, um, in our system in Ohio, it's really funny because in the federal court system, the judge uh, doesn't have to allow the attorneys to question the voir dire. He, can, he or she can do it all themselves or they can allow the attorneys to participate. In Ohio, the rule is, in the state of the rules of criminal procedure, in civil procedure, that uh, while the judge can ask questions of the jury, uh, he or she has to allow the attorneys to I also see. ask questions. Although. Um, there is a clause in there, something to the, effect, to the effect that the attorneys are given the right to supplement the judge's question. So you could have a situation, although I've never, I've never done it very often, where you could say to the lawyer, you know what, I asked that question, so, so that's not a question you can ask oh, now. Oh, I see, I see. Well, uh, as far as uh, my, my question is... Uh, so what do we do when we get them there? Well, yeah, what is your method of jury selection? I mean, well, look, we start out, okay, so here's what happens. Um, in December of, um, a December of the preceding year, so it had been December 2010 for 2011, um, my bailiff uh, selects a number at uh, random, gives that number to a computer programmer, and that number becomes 10,000 or so jurors. And that's how many we probably have the initial run. Okay. okay, but of those 10,000, probably about 4,000 are not going to be a, in the county anymore because you, you, you don't purge voters for four years. Okay. So there's yeah. a lot of voters sure. who moved around. So let's say we end up with maybe 6,000 good uh, jurors, so to speak. So we then divide them into 52 panels, one panel per, per week, 52 weeks per year. And that gives us maybe, maybe not maybe like 80, 50, I don't know, so many people per panel, but a lot of times people can't come, they can't, they can't, they, they want to get changed, they have vacation plans, things like that. So we end up maybe with 30 or 40 people who are eligible to serve that week. I see. Um, and then what we try to do, in my courtroom, we try to, and I think probably in Judge Collier's courtroom, although he and I actually never spoke about this directly, um, we try to have a system where if you've served, if there is a week that has two jury trials and you serve on one panel, then we don't want you to have to come back for the second trial. Makes sense. Um, so what we do when we get them there is, is that we've adopted a new system in my court, uh, new in the sense that it was authorized by the rules in the last couple of years, where we do what's called the strike method. And what we do is, uh, let's say we're going to impanel a civil jury of, of eight people. Yeah. We keep 20 people there. We let 20 go home if there's 40, so we divide them half. 20 stay, 20 go home. The lawyers have to question all 20 of them uh, for uh, cause. And then when they start exercising their peremptories, they just say things. They, we go out, outside the presence of the jury, either in my office or a sidebar, uh, and like the plaintiff's lawyer would go, I challenge juror number 12. And then the second guy would go, I challenge juror number 10. And so those two are off the jury, and now two more people I are going to take their place out of that 20. Oh. And so we don't, we, we're not a lot, what, it, it actually saves a lot of time because while we may allow more time on the front end for questioning, because you're talking about talking to 20 people instead of talking to eight people, sure. uh, less time on the back end. I see. Uh, and also the way we do it, um, they, the jurors doesn't know who's challenging them. They never know who it was oh. that uh, excused them. I they see. just know they weren't they selected. They're they're just, they're, at, the end of the, at the end of the process, I say the following people will be serving on today's jury, and I read off the names, and they take their and seats. They, they and that's had it. no no. That's right. Well, you know, I, when you think about it, uh, you start with the random number and ten thousand down to six thousand, but trying to set all this up for a year. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I guess I never really thought about all the administrative detail that yeah, goes in. Yeah, my into. bailiff, actually Karen Barnes is my bailiff and she's in charge of, of handling our juries and uh, Judge Collier's bailiff, uh, Terry, is in charge of handling his juries. And they actually do quite a lot with jurors because they have to set the panels up, they have to send, make sure the letters go out, they have to take the excuses that come back in and why people can't serve. Sure. They got to talk to people. Today, before I came down here, for example, a lady stopped in to see Karen, uh, my bailiff, to make sure that we had gotten her, you know, her um, reason as to why she didn't think she could serve next week and, uh, you know, where we're going to excuse her. So it is, it actually is a I fair amount of administrative detail. Once you're a juror, Judge, you have certain obligations. I mean, I, I've, I've um, heard you and Judge Collier uh, over and over again. I know you've said it many, many times, but you're reminding the jurors of their, their sworn oath to, right. to do certain things. Uh, for the benefit of, our, of our, our viewers who maybe have never been a juror, what, what is your obligation? Well, the obligation is, number one, you've got to pay attention, listen to the evidence. Okay. Don't make any decisions until you've heard everything. Don't do your own research. That's a critical one. Yeah. You've got to rely on the information given to you uh, by the uh, lawyers uh, in the courtroom. So you can't go home and go you on the internet? You can't go home on the internet and do your own research. Um, can't talk to anybody who's involved in the proceedings. If you see them in the hallway, don't start engaging them in conversation because okay. it doesn't look appropriate. Um, and pretty much that's it. Um, and pretty much, um, you know, and the important, probably the most important thing is to pay attention. Sure. And to and then jurors have to do two jobs. Um, the first job they have to do is listen to the evidence. The second job they have to do is make the decision what the evidence means. And in a real in a, in a real sense, uh, when a jury trial concludes, in the sense that I've given the instructions and the attorneys have done the final argument and they presented the case, for most of it, for for myself and the attorneys, our job is mostly over unless there's a juror sure. question. Sure. But for the jury, it, the real job just begins at that point. Right there. Okay, now, like a lot of things, rights that we have, precious rights, that sometimes people don't take all that seriously, like voting. Yeah. Okay, so being a juror, can you, I don't want to use the word penalty, but I think that's the appropriate word, but can, can you get in trouble for... Yeah, theoretically, if you don't show up for jury duty, we could send the sheriff of Edina County out to your house, knock on the door, arrest you and bring you before the court and have a show cause hearing why you should not be held in contempt. Wow, so you start out with a potential... I've never done that. Start out as a potential juror and you wound up as a defendant. Yeah, yeah I've, never, I've never done that. And to my knowledge, I don't think Judge Kyer's ever done it either. And I've never heard of Judge McElveen or Judge Chase doing it. But um, it can be done. That is the law. But I would say this, that most of the time people um, are in Medina County are pretty good about appearing for jury duty. Um, Although right now, in the last couple of years, because of the uh, economics of the situation, because we don't pay jurors a whole lot of money. How much do you? Well, pay? I think it right now it's $27 a day. Okay. Well, oh. no, I guess that isn't very much. No, thing, no, right? it's not very much at all. Okay. And when you sign on to jury duty, it might be a day, it might be a week. Um, yeah, the longest I've had a jury trial go is two weeks. Really? That was in a criminal case. I had a civil case go about nine days. Um, but uh, I would say most jury trials in the municipal courts, Medina and Wasworth, are probably over in a day. day. I would say most trials in my, my court and Judge Kyer's court are over in three days. But if you get something like a capital case, I'm You're going to be there a long time. You, 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 you could be there a long time. And, I mean, I hate to use the word inconvenience, but I mean, it, 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 it would be difficult if one were to wind up on that panel. Oh, yeah. You're, you're not going anywhere until this thing is over. No, and, and, and uh, in California, they've had a couple of cases where they have se sequestered jurors uh, for long periods of time on capital cases or very high-profile cases, and they've ended up with broken marriages mm -hmm. and wow. affairs among the jurors, <laughs> and uh, wow. you know, the, so they, they, that would be a kind of a problem. Um, Did you ever do that, Judge? Did you ever sequester a jury? Only one jury have I sequestered. I only sequestered them for the, deli the, the deliberations. Um, I sequestered them. Once they got the case given to them, they were sequestered. They, they deliberated for two days, and they were sequestered for two days, actually at a, at a hotel here in Wandsworth, Ohio. So I've never done it since then. I do have a capital case on my docket right now. 
Um, whether it will go as a capital case or not, we don't know for sure. Um, and I probably, I think, if I do that case, I'll have to sequester the jury. Meaning that when they're sequestered, they, their meals, their sleeping arrangements, I mean, they're not going anywhere. They're not going right. home. Right. What we do is when you sequester a jury is you, you monitor um, their, like you take them to a hotel, you make sure there's nothing in the hotel that can communicate with the outside world. They can't talk on the uh, telephone? No, that's right. Uh, you, uh, sometimes you allow them a little bit of time to talk on the phone. Um, but once they get, um, they, they, they have to do everything as a group subject to the control of the bailiff. Um, what's the difference between a bench trial and a jury trial? Well, a bench trial is a trial to the court. Jury trial is a trial to the jury where in a bench trial, I would serve as a, tri as a judge. I would serve as a trier of fact. In a jury trial, the ju jury serves as a trier of fact. So, for example, if you have a criminal case, uh, the factual issues in dispute are, did the person go do the crime? If you try it to the court, I make the decision. It, both as to the law and the facts. If you try it to the jury, I give them instructions of law. They imply those instructions to the facts as they determine the facts to be. Why would any? I, it would seem that if you're making the decisions about the law and you're ultimately sentencing people, and you sat through about 600 of these, why doesn't everybody just ask for a bench trial? Well. In criminal cases, oftentimes the defendant uh, doesn't want a bench trial because if there's a jury trial, they've got to convince 12 people, where if there's a bench trial, they only have to convince one oh, person. Oh, I see. I see. Um, I see. The other okay. fact is, is that oftentimes I believe that there is the viewpoint that judges, um, because they've heard a lot of cases, um, may depending on the facts of the case, may be more sympathetic to one side or the other. You know, it's a good question. I've never actually asked lawyers um, why they decide to have a jury trial or not have a jury trial. What I have noticed, though, in criminal cases, is that the cases that get tried to me seem to be cases where they have what I would call kind of a technical defense, yeah. where it's based maybe on, on a certain statutory interpretation. Whereas when they try cases, the jury is more of a defense that, for one of a better term, might be more of an emotional defense or a fact-based defense. Makes sense, Judge. Well, as usual, the time has slipped away. And okay, there you I go. I could probably keep asking you questions out of it, but again, we thank you for being our guest. Thank you for having me. And look forward to having you back. Sure, look so. forward to being back. Well, thank you, Judge. Comments made by John's guest on Law Talk are solely those of his guest and do not necessarily reflect the views of Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project. To view this show and others, go to www.cdzclub.org. In the Wandsworth area, a complete listing of dates and times of this broadcast, tune in to WCTV Channel 15 or log on to wadsworthcity.com and follow the links to WCTV. At CZ Clip, we're devoted to the education of today's legal issues. Fueled by the public's keen interest in our legal system and current events, CZ Clip is dedicated to the educational venues aimed at enhancing the understanding by all citizens, regardless of age, education, occupation, or wealth. A function of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project.